In this video, let's talk about model validation. In the previous video, I have covered model binding. So model binding happens before the action method is triggered and is responsible to provide the data as a parameter to the action method. But what if there's something wrong inside the data, right? Who's going to validate that? As a developer, we definitely can do that manually inside the action method. We can examine the parameter value and make sure that everything is valid. There's nothing wrong with the data and there's no chances to break our application. Yes, we can do that manually, but ASP.NET Core Web API framework provides that functionality for us already. And that's called model validation. Model validation is triggered in between of these two steps. And if there's anything wrong, it's going to spit out a nicely formatted message to the caller. There are a couple of ways to take advantage of model validation that is provided by the ASP.NET Core Web API framework. One way is to use data annotation, and that's what we are going to cover in this video. To use data annotation, we should go to the definition of the parameter type, which is the shirt class in this case. Let's go to the definition and we see a bunch of properties and we need to annotate on these properties to specify certain business rules. For example, if we require brand name always to be there, then we can say required. And you can see that once I tap, the namespace will automatically be imported. This namespace appear here. Let's say that color is always required, but size is not always required. So in that case, instead of using integer, I'm going to use integer question mark to specify that the size is nullable. Let's say gender is also required. So I'm going to use required as well here. And price is not always required. So let's use a question mark as well. So this is a very simple annotation coming from the data annotation namespace. And this namespace has nothing to do with Web API. So you don't need to worry about introducing any extra stuff that is related to the Web API framework into our POCO class, plain old C sharp object. So basically I'm saying that these attributes are not changing the nature of the class. So you can feel free to use it. Once we put in annotations on the properties of the class and use that class inside the action methods, ASP.NET Core Web API will automatically use those annotations during the step of model validation. So whether you do anything with the shirt class or not, model validation will always happen there. It's just that when you have those annotations on the properties of the incoming class object, model validation will know how to validate those properties of the object. So let's give it a try. Let's run the web API and let's bring up our Postman. So instead of using form data, let's switch back to raw and using JSON. First of all, our shirt ID, let's say one. And if we don't provide anything else, and let's just send this to the endpoint and see what's going to happen. So I'm clicking on the send button. Now you can see that we have an error message and it tells us that the brand field is required, the color field is required, and the gender field is also required. It's the HTTP code that is returned is 400, which means it's a bad request. So who actually spit up the error message? It's the model validation of the ASP.NET Core Web API framework that actually happened before the method is triggered. Because you know that if the method has already been triggered, then we know that we are going to get this particular message. But instead of getting the particular message, what we got is this message that comes back as a JSON. And it tells us exactly which field is wrong. So because of this, you know that model validation actually happened after model binding and before the action method is invoked. So let's actually make this endpoint work by specifying the brand. And I'm just going to say my brand again, 
and then color I'm going to say red and gender I'm going to say male so with all these required properties provided if I click on send I'm expecting this is going to pass and we're going to get HTTP 200 as the response and I'm clicking on the send button now 200 OK is back and we're seeing the message creating a shirt so just to sum up in order to take advantage of the model validation that is provided by the framework one of the first ways that we can use is to use data annotation and for that we can just use data annotation attributes to decorate the properties that we want to validate and in this video of course i only use the required attribute but there are so many other attributes we can take advantage of let's take a look at the other attributes in the documentation from microsoft so you can see that under the data annotations namespace we have so many different classes we use the required attribute here but you can use other attributes for example you can use a range attribute to specify that a particular number has to be inside a range right and a phone attribute to specify that the data field value should be well formed phone number and a url attribute provides a url validation to make sure the provided string is in a url format and compare attribute to compare two different properties you see that there's so many different things that you can do with the data annotation attributes under the data annotations namespace so that's the first way you can take advantage of this model validation step inside the web api framework okay i'll see you in the next one